Do you have dreams and goals for your weight loss surgery transformation? Does your butt get in the way of your success? Not your B-U-T-T butt or tushy. I'm talking about the B-U-T butt that keeps you stuck in your rut and prevents you from moving ahead and reaching your transformation goals. Stay right where you are. Let's have a mental boot camp and talk about how to deal with the butt. Hi, I'm registered dietitian nutritionist, Dr. Susan Mitchell, ex-radio dietitian turned podcaster. You're listening to the Bariatric Surgery Success Podcast, episode number 128. Are you tired of all the hype and confusion when it comes to nutrition, especially bariatric nutrition? Eat this food. No, don't eat that food. Take this supplement. Skip certain meals, try this diet to reset your pouch, or heck, just do a detox. It's enough to make you say, forget about it. I don't know what to do. Well, I do. I know what to do. When it comes to your bariatric surgery, nutrition is specific. So let's cut through the hype. Let's get the accurate information you need now. Simple strategies that work in your real life. I want you to feel well every day, get out there, do the things you want to do. And that's why I do the Bariatric Surgery Success Podcast for you. You're in the right place. I'm so glad you're listening. Are you receiving my weekly newsletter, Breaking Down Nutrition? If not, go sign up right now on my website, breakingdownnutrition.com. So every week, you'll be the first to know about giveaways or product specials, helpful tips, the latest podcasts, and upcoming interviews that you don't want to miss. Do you feel overwhelmed since your weight loss surgery? Do you have dreams and goals for your weight loss surgery, your transformation? But this transformation stuff is harder than you thought, and it takes a lot of work and change. Does your butt get in the way of your success? Not your B-U-T-T butt, not your backside. I'm talking about the B-U-T butt that keeps you in a rut, prevents you from moving ahead and reaching your transformation goals. You know the butt. You would like to start walking or swimming, but you feel too exhausted. Or you want to prep your meals a couple of times a week, but you feel overwhelmed and don't know where to start. Or you really need to get more sleep, but your schedule is already jammed and it just never seems to happen. Your attitude affects your journey, your weight, ultimately your success. When you're overwhelmed and stressed, it's impossible to find time to shop, to prep food so you can eat well, exercise or do anything else for yourself. And you may feel guilty when you do. Think about this. When you say to yourself, I'm going to try, does this get it done? How often do you succeed in achieving the change you really want? Trying doesn't cut it. It comes down to training versus trying. Let me say that again. Trying doesn't cut it. It comes down to training versus trying. In order to stop that but scenario from happening over and over, I would like to do this, but the status quo has got to go. It truly does come down to training versus trying. Let's think about an Olympic swimmer or a Hall of Fame football player or a top-notch chef with Michelin star restaurants. These folks didn't just say, I'll try and then go through the motions. Their success wasn't about luck or good intentions. They trained. It's about intention with execution to achieve the lifestyle and the transformation that you want, not luck. Bottom line, don't miss this, bottom line, your why must be greater than your what. Say what? Your why must be greater than your what. In other words, your reason for wanting the change must be bigger and more important to you than the change itself in order for you to do it. Let's say you want to lose 10 pounds that you've regained recently. That's the what. 
You say to yourself, I'll try, and you may go through the motions without change or execution. Did it happen? The why is the intention. Why do you want to lose it? Did you feel better before? Was your blood glucose lower? Your blood pressure too? Did your clothes fit better? Did you sleep well? The why has to be greater, more important to you than the what in order for you to make that tweak in your lifestyle, to execute that change. So think about it. When we feel overwhelmed, when we feel stress, food often becomes the outlet that we turn to for relief and we lose the focus on our training and our execution. Food is an outlet that's available every direction you turn. It's legal. It calls your name when you're mad, you're hurt, you're sad, you're stressed, you're overwhelmed. It calls your name. Woohoo. There have been days when my schedule is just brutal and things don't go well at all. And I admit it. I have eaten mint chocolate chip ice cream more than once for dinner. You know what I mean? Those chocolate chip cookies at your favorite baker, the mocha chocolate chunk ice cream that calls your name just a little won't hurt. Food helps to mask the emotions we don't want to feel or deal with. But a happy meal is not going to make you happy in the long run. When I was writing books, I realized I truly was the author of these books. It meant it was up to me to write them, to complete them. The same is true for you. You're the author of your book, your life. As the author, you have the ability to change the chapter if it's not working for you. It's time to stop just going through the motions and have a mental boot camp with yourself an up close and personal inventory so you can kick the butt out of your life. Take a hard look at your day-to-day life and why tweaks or changes need to be made. Then ask yourself, why do you want these changes? Is your why bigger and more important to you than your list of what to change? Remember, your why must really matter for the what to happen. Remind yourself of why you had surgery and why your successful outcome matters to you specifically. Then decide the what. What must be addressed, changed, adapted, deleted, so that training instead of just trying becomes your way of life. The butt has been in the way blocking your success. It's time for it to go. Okay. For example, if you, if your what is to meal prep each week so that you eat healthier, put time in your calendar each week to plan, shop and prep and cook. Time or lack of it is a big issue. One night a week when the grocery flyers come out, this is what I do. I look online and then I set aside 30 minutes or so to plan out meals for the next week after looking at our schedules. Otherwise, you know what happens? It's too easy to turn to takeout or fast food when you have no executable plan. Find a window of opportunity. Set aside time to prep and cook. I do this either on Saturday or Sunday, depending on our schedule. And I look forward to it now. Typically, I'm going to make something like Oh, chili, or I'll cook protein such as chicken or fish or shrimp. You know, I live in Florida, so seafood is available that will give me leftovers for another meal. I also cut up fruit and veggies, or I put together items for a snack, such as cheese sticks alongside that cut up fruit. Trying and execution. Which one is you have to do? You have to move beyond trying to training and execution, right? It's the secret to eating well in your busy home. I value my health. I know you do too, and that of my family. So it gets a top priority. Okay, here's what I want you to do this week. Listen closely. Answer yourself honestly. How big is your butt? Are you just trying and going through the motions instead of training with intention? Remember, You're the author of your book chapter this week and every week. Start today. Think about why you want to make change and then decide on the what and the training it will take to make it happen for you. Remember, you are worth it.